You are listening to Amplify Your Success Podcast, episode 216. And today, let's look at five disempowering beliefs that experts and emerging authorities have that are keeping them feeling invisible. You ready for this? We're going deep today. Let's get started. Welcome to the Amplify Your Success Podcast. Get ready to ramp up your revenue, amplify your impact, and make your mark in the world. This is the show for experts, thought leaders, and service professionals who want to shatter their limits and achieve that next level. You're going to find out from other experts and influencers how they made it. Now, let's get amplified. Hey there, inspired entrepreneurs and business leaders. It's your host, Melanie Benson. And today, I want to go inside the hood of your car. Let's look at the engine that is powering up your visibility and allowing you to amplify your authority to the world, or it's actually making you feel invisible, stuck, and as if what you're doing isn't really creating the impact that it could. Now, I have found that beliefs have a huge impact on our ability to take action. And I'll talk a little bit about how beliefs are shaping your reality But first, I want you to really think for a minute, are you feeling like you are visible, highly visible, and highly paid? Do you feel like you are being seen in all the right places by your ideal clients? Are you consistently keeping your brand presence and your your messaging in the right places so that opportunity and ideal clients are coming to you? If you're not saying yes to those things, then I want to invite you to the Amplify Inner Circle. This is my paid program. We are gearing up for our uh, online retreat for this year. And one of the things I know is that oftentimes beliefs and mindset and fears and all of these internal doubts and clouded thoughts are actually the one thing that's in the way. Like you would know how, you would take better action if you didn't have this little noise going on in your head all the time. And strategy without mindset will give you nothing. It's one of the premises and it's one of the pillars of Amphiner Circle is matching the right mindset with the right strategy so that you are amplifying your reach, you're amplifying your income, amplifying your credibility in all the right places so that your ideal clients are choosing you. And that's what leads to being a highly paid expert, a highly paid authority in your market. And if you know this is the year for you to take the leap, to join a program, to help you really raise your profile, raise your game, and take the business to the next level and serve more people, then I want you in Amplify Inner Circle to AmplifyInnerCircle.com. Now, as we go through these five disempowering beliefs, I want you to ask yourself, is this coming up for me? Is this something that's maybe sticking for me? And you will know that it is if you are not taking action on visibility strategies, on putting yourself in the authority position, building your authority platform, and you keep saying, someday, I'll get to that, not right now. Okay, so that's a little sign that you may have one of these five disempowering beliefs. Now let's talk about the first one. Even though you know what you do well, often there is a sabotaging thought, a doubt or a fear that you're not good enough. And I'm not good enough often comes up when you start comparing yourself to someone else who does something similar and you feel behind. You feel like instead of leaping forward like you believe the other person to be doing, you look at all the things you're not doing well enough, what you're not good at, what you're maybe not making progress on, and you form this belief, I'm not good enough. And it happens to so many people of all levels of success This is where imposter syndrome is at the root, is believing that you're not good enough. And I'm not good enough leads to I'm not ready. And so this is a disempowering belief because if you are walking around with this core 
thought pattern of I'm not good enough. Who's going to buy from me? I don't know what I'm doing yet. Uh, I, I don't know enough to really position myself as an expert. All of that starts to translate and we create this habitual neural pathway of holding back. And here's what I can tell you is you can't afford to hold back, even though you are not where you think you should be. There are people that need what, exactly what you know, exactly where you are right now. And so when this comes up for my clients in Outfine a Circle, one of the things we often look at is, well, if we dial in who your ideal client is and you really look at what your niche is and you, and this is something we, we work a lot with is like really fine tuning your superpower and your unique profit amplifier so that what you're offering is the perfect solution to the right people. And then you are always good enough. Okay. So really check in, like, is I'm not good enough something that plagues me and is it true or is it that you're maybe focusing or comparing yourself to others or you're focusing on clients that are maybe not really your ideal clients and so you're in this weird dynamic where they're reflecting back to your worst fears because you're focusing on the wrong people. That is a common uh, pattern, sabotaging pattern that I catch a lot of my clients getting into that we can quickly fix. Okay, so I'm not good enough. Second, I worry that someone will attack me. Oh, just feel into that one for a minute. That one's huge. So this could be physical, but that's not really what we're talking about here. We're talking about those verbal trolls who make it their job to try and school and police other people's success. I did a whole episode on this not too long ago because it's rampant and I'm in a lot of communities with high profile, uh, big name marketers and leaders who are very visible and it happens to all of them. And there's a syndrome in Australia. I have some Australian clients that have enlightened me to this concept along the way. And that is the tall poppy syndrome. And so in Australia, one of the things that happens is the farmers of poppy farms will go out and they will cut down the tall poppies that are growing too fast and are getting above everyone else, or I should say above the other flowers, so that the poppy fields look good and there isn't uh, abnormalities. And what's happened is a lot of people are embodying that it's not okay for someone to raise their head, to raise their profile and stand out in a crowded market. So if this is you and there is this deep fear that someone's going to come after you, that they're going to make you wrong, they're going to humiliate you, they're going to attack you online, what I want you to do is start working on flipping that script. You cannot afford to let people dictate how much success you create, how big of an impact you make, how visible you are because you're worried that someone's going to try and take you down. Okay, what we have to do is make sure that you're strong, that you feel clean about what you're teaching, that you're powerful, and that your messaging stays on point with your superpowers. And if people are going to attack you, you have to let it go. And I'll link up into the show notes the episode I did on um, dealing with cyber bullies and trolls because it is a little jarring. I've been attacked multiple times over the 20 years and sometimes even by a friend or a client. And it's not fun and it's really hard to navigate. But if you have tools uh, and you can move through it, and of course, hopefully you'll turn to your coach or you'll turn to me if you're in Amphire Circle, then we move through it. Okay. There are strategies to deal with it. There's a couple people I think that do such a good job of this. Uh, John Lee Dumas has been good at it. Uh, Molly Mahoney does a really good job of it. And one of the things you have to kind of keep in perspective is that, you know, sometimes it helps diffuse these situations by having a gatekeeper. So my team is my gatekeeper. They know like if someone's just being stupid and they're just being hostile for no reason that we just bounce them. Like we don't, we have a respect policy here. And if people are being disrespectful and they're being hurtful, then they're out. Um, But the other thing is you can out them online and just, you don't have to say their name, but you can 
put public how they're handling things and and it kind of diffuses it. And then you get a whole bunch of love from the people who are like, that's stupid. And I'll, I'll end this one with this great quote by Brene Brown that I think is so important to remember uh, because we will get criticism. You'll even get criticism from your coaches. You'll get criticism from your family. You'll get criticism from your friends who do not get what you're doing. And at times they will be threatened by what you're doing. And they may have the best of your interests at heart. And they're trying to talk you out of a mistake that they believe you're making. Look, if you believe in something wholeheartedly, you know this is the thing you want to do and someone's talking you out of it and you know in every fiber of your being, this is the thing you're supposed to move forward, then you have to remember this. People who are not doing what you're doing are not the right people to ask for advice. And Brene Brown's quote is, if you're not in the ring slugging it out exactly the way I am, I don't take your feedback. That's a little bit of a paraphrase, but that's the bottom line of it. Okay. So if you're worried that someone's going to attack you or they're going to say bad things about you or judge you, you have to stop worrying about that. It will happen because that's what happens with success. Your job is to be grounded and strong and have the tools to navigate it when it comes up. Let's move to the third one. There are so many people teaching what I teach already. Why should I bother? Okay, so here's why this is a disempowering belief for experts just like you and me. This is actually a sign that what you're doing is really important. If other people are already teaching what you teach and there's a lot of noise in a crowded market, great. That means there's a huge market for what you teach. What you should be worried about is if nothing else, nothing else is existing about what you're teaching. That means you're going to be a trailblazer and that's a very different marketing and educational system, <laughs> we've got to create a market, which is doable, but just know it's a longer path to market. And I don't want to scare you away from that. Just know that's a different approach than if you're entering a crowded market and we're going to establish your visibility. We're going to establish your pocket of expertise. We're going to shine light on your superpower and what makes you unique to do it. Okay. And there's a lot of ways to do that, but don't let that become your thought pattern that holds you back. That's a good sign. And I believe that if there are other people who teach what you teach, you have to double down and lean into what makes you unique and what your superpowers are and who your ideal audience really is. And you may even want to really niche down. Look, I'm in a super crowded market. You might not have noticed, but there's a lot of people that do similar things to me, but nobody does it the way I do. And that's what I lean into. Okay, number four. I don't know how, okay, I don't know how, okay, this has got to be one of the single most disempowering beliefs and thought patterns that exists because what happens is I don't know how translates to I do nothing. So normally this is like, I don't know how to get my message across or I don't know how to get more clients or I don't know how to um, pitch a podcaster or I don't know how to uh, get on stages, right? Whatever you want to fill in that blank with. I don't know how is not the best statement. What I want you to flip, this is all about flipping, flipping the internal script that runs around something. Of course, you don't know how. You haven't done it yet. So what I would like for you to do is I'm getting clearer and clearer on how or get super committed to what you want to accomplish and then find someone that will help you learn how. Look, uh, my mastermind level is full of people who didn't know how to do what they're doing right now and we prioritize what do you need to do right now? And then we craft their plan. Like we literally come up with their specific plan. I'm working with one of my clients who's introducing a brand new coaching uh, model into her industry that she's never done before. She's never offered coaching. She has all the, the knowledge, all the brilliance. She's just never organized it this way. And so I don't know how kept her stuck for six years six years of suffering and struggling. Then she finally said, I don't need to know how, but I am committed to it and I'm going to break it down and focus on one thing at a time. And that is where I came in to help her organize what she was going to do, get clear what her niche was going to be, get clear what her thing is she's going to teach, get clear who her market is, right? We start to chunk it down. Now she's working on her messaging to get on podcasts, to start building up momentum and 
get more opportunities and more speaking gigs. You can break it down and focus one piece at a time or hire someone to help you. Don't let I don't know how be the disempowering belief that keeps you from impacting the lives of those people who need you. There are people who need you. You can't afford to be invisible to them. It will hurt your heart to know that you let those times pass where people were searching for the thing that you know how to do best. And we can't afford to let people suffer. We have to raise our game, raise our profile, get seen and get in front of them. So figure out how to do it or hire a coach, join Amphire and Circle, whatever is right for you. The last disempowering belief is they can't afford it. They can't afford me. This fear is misplaced. And I'll tell you why. When you know how to create your unique profit amplifier and you know how to message it and you know how to be consistently visible, you will never again get that stuck in your head that people can't afford you because your positioning, your packaging, and your presence will be attracting the people who need what you do so much that they're willing to invest. Now, again, there is a skill that comes along with this. So if you're attracting people who can't afford you, we got to focus on your messaging. If you're attracting people who are not the right client and they're like, this isn't me, I don't need this, they're going to often say, I can't afford it as an easy out. We got to solve the right problem here. If you're attracting people who are the right audience with the right message and you've got the right offer and they're still saying no, then that's a sales system. It's why I included in Amphire Inner Circle so that you know how to structure an enrollment conversation so you're doing all the right things to help your right clients make the best decision for them. And usually that's to say yes to you. I can't afford it is a way of saying, I'm not bought in, you haven't sold me. So I had a great example of this on the reverse. I was interviewing copywriters one time and I had this copywriter who came really highly recommended and she asked a few questions when we were having the consultation. And then when I asked her, you know, like what her rates were and stuff, she, or what it was like to work with her, she went into this whole thing about what she charges and how it was, how it was working. And I realized like she did not position her authority and credibility and I'm listening to her thinking, I have no idea if she can deliver on what the value of the investment is. So when I'm looking for a return on investment, I need to know that I can get a certain result out of making a big investment. I'm willing to make the investment. Just like your ideal clients are willing to make the investment when they know that they that the value exchange makes sense. And that's where we have to master that skill set in order to move beyond my, these people can't afford me to the right people will figure out how to invest in this. This is a disempowering belief. And sometimes it's because you're walking around saying, I can't afford what I need. Like I'm financially struggling right now. And you're projecting that onto your ideal clients. I've got a bunch of stories of how that happened to me in the past, especially in the early days. But what you have to know is it's never about what they can afford. It's always about the value of what you're asking them to invest in. Do they value the result? And are you credible in their eyes in delivering that to them? These are all fixable things, but you do know, have to know how to amplify your authority. You've got to have your, all, your, all the elements of your roadmap in place. And you need to believe that people need what you have to deliver. So I love to hear if one of these beliefs or maybe all of these beliefs are up for you. You can uh, put in the comments on the show page. If you're part of our free Amplify Your Authority group, pop in there and tell me about it. Or just hit email, just email us or direct message us on any of the social media outlets. I want to know if these are hitting home for you, or maybe there's another belief that you're bumping up against lately. I'd like to help you break free of it and shatter your limits. And if you are joining us in Amphiner Circle, which I highly recommend, this will be a conversation you never have to have again, because we're going to 
heal and transform this part of your mind so that you are the go-to expert in the minds of your best clients. Thanks for tuning in today, Amplifier. Be sure to join us right now in the Amplify Your Authority community at authorityamplifiers.com and I'll share my seven proven tips to be a highly paid expert that stands out in a crowded market. Plus, we're gonna keep this conversation going and I wanna hear from you how you're going to amplify your authority and make a greater impact. Before you go, please take a minute to give our show and our guests some love over on your favorite podcasting platform. Subscribe, rate, and review. Leave your full name and I'll spotlight you and your authority on social media. 